and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk, and this is episode 200. I'm gonna do a little shopping, and I'll explain it a little bit more later. So let me get to it. Can I get some help? Absolutely, you can. Go ahead. I need a case of wine. A case of wine? A we got you wine. covered today. All right. All right, let's... Tell me, tell me about the wooden nickel. It's nice and big, fruit forward, well priced for what it is, great with lamb, so if you're having lamb tonight, it's gonna be an excellent pairing. Awesome, so, but, but really, the real question is, what's the rating? <laughs> All right, put it in. Try this. All right. Put it in there. fun shopping and let me tell you what I'm shopping for this is the 200th episode and obviously it's a huge thank you to you I get plenty of thank yous every day 15 to 20 I'd like to be a 30 you know but at the end of the day this is really all about you and a little bit of me and so the amount of thank yous I get is uh, nothing compared to the one big thank you I want to give you guys again this show has brought me so much joy so much everything, I mean, it's just a great thing for our company, everybody, it's just, it's a morale booster. Eric and I get to hang out a little bit every day because of it. You know, it's just, it's a great show. The interaction, all the friends that I've made, I cannot believe what's going on in Chicago. 75 people, party in Chicago is going to be nuts. I'm super excited for that. So, Wine Library has just become, TV has become an amazing, amazing thing for me. And so I wanna give back. I get requested 10 to 15 times a day, minimum to show wines on the show that I like. Not wines that we pick up for themes and then taste and then maybe I like them and maybe I don't. And I don't do that and I always answer I, that's not what the show's about because the show's not really about things that I've already had and want to tell you about that are great because it's a little selly and it's just not what we do. And plus, I'm kind of looking to have fun my darn self and taste all these wines along with you plus the natural first reaction is what makes it so much fun on camera. However, it's asked so much, and I've been asked so much for value wines lately, a lot, probably, and a whole bunch after yesterday's high-end wines, that I came up with a cool little idea. I hope you like it. For the 200th episode, I am showing you excluding wines that have already been on Wine Library TV. There's some wines we've done before, but not these vintages. So excluding wines that have been on Wine Library TV, as of right this moment, the perfect $200 case of wine, which is extremely fair in the wine world these days. I mean, really the fun episode to do is the perfect $100 case of wine, I'm gonna do that soon when we get to episode 100. And so what's really fun is that this is the $200 case, in my opinion. Now, it's an interesting case. It's the best $200 case of wine if you really wanna learn and get into wine and have quality and different things, because it's some different stuff, a dessert wine, a sparkling wine, and, and, and I'm really, really excited about this, and let's get right into it, because it's gonna run extremely long. I'm gonna break up Ian, set this up for me. I'm gonna break up his uh, little setup. I'm gonna start with the sparkling, because that's what works best for me. And uh, this is the Illiporat uh, Cava Rosé, and uh, 2003 vintage, 14 US dollars, and 90 points, um, from the wine advocate, I think uh, Jay Miller, it, I think I wrote down, I think it's Jay Miller that reviewed this. It might be Parker, I could be wrong. Again, this is a sparkling rosé cava, and uh, from Spain, 14 bucks, and we've talked about cava in the past, and uh, you know, so 
you know, bubbles. Lots and lots of bubbles. Now kava's great, we've talked about it in the past. I'm a huge sparkling head and kava represents enormous value, just tremendous value. And for $14 for 90 point Parker or Jay Miller is really extraordinary. So let's give this a little bit of whirl. As you can see it's a rosé. You got the great little color going on, little strawberry shortcake action, little reference to the old school WLTV. Jason Hicks, where are you? Are you around? Time for a mashup. Jason Hicks, if you don't comment on this episode, I'm not doing Wine Library TV anymore. Let's give it a whirl. Whew. It smells purely like a cherry Italian ice. Go and grab those Italian ices, you know, the yellow ones, the best ones. Take your little scoop, smell it, cherry. That's what this smells like to a T. How about that? Nuts, a little high C action as well. There's that artificial flavor coming through. Very nice though. Little hints of clove coming through, bouncing through on the nose as well, which is really nice. And even a little hint of a, even a little hint of like the stalk of a corn with the green stuff. What is a stalk? Is that right? You know, so that even comes through a little bit, which is really awkward. I kind of caught that in the last whiff. So, really nice nose. I had this wine about three days ago. I loved it. It was colder than this. I can tell you, you can really get the true essence of any wine at room temperature. That's why I drink all my whites at room temperature. Nothing's hidden by the cold. And because it's not chilled, I do taste a little more acidity than I tasted the last time, which is fine. Nice dry raspberry tart kind of flavor uh, on the mid palate. The cherries are still bouncing around here and there and everywhere. We are the gummy bears. You know, I mean, it's a good bottle of wine, 14 bucks. Rose champagne should be discovered by everybody out there. And this is not champagne, you know, it's rose sparkling wine from Cava. It's really exceptionally balanced and it's real sparkling wine, not a lot of the junk you get out of California, to be honest with you. Great cherry flavor, I mean really great. Really just a beautiful, beautiful sparkling wine. Let's move on. SS, you got a lot of work to do today, my man. Let's go, uh, let's go 89 plus points on this. Real solid, solid bottle of bubbly. Tough to beat 14 bones. Let's move on. I'm gonna readjust here, give me a little more room. 200 episodes. Did you ever think, Eric? I thought four. Four? Jeez. It's at least five, it's my lucky number. This is the uh, Fontaine Neal Borgo Tessis Pinot Grigio. And this is a 2005 vintage from Fruoli and it's 10 US dollars, and um, it's a very, very intriguing bottle of Pinot Grigio, and I'm gonna tell you why I put it in here. This is a Pinot Grigio that really brings the thunder. It's a, from a great area, it's a great Pinot Grigio, it's $10. Pinot Grigios are obviously very popular and do very well. What I like about this is it's golden color. You know, it's got almost like a Chardonnay color, and that leads me to my segue. This is really Pinot Grigio acting a little bit like Chardonnay, but still keeping the acidity and structure of a Pinot Grigio intact. I had this one day ago, or two days ago. So, you know, I'm, I'm talking about it like I just had it, but let me get into it again. And once again, thank you for reminding me. Good thing you taste wine. If you do forget things, don't think you remember everything. This has a very intriguing hint of mango and pineapple as well, which is very tropical for Pinot Grigio, and I really enjoy it. Don't let my Chardonnay comments make you think of, uh, of um, Oki, there's not. There's tons of acidity. It's the mouthfeel. It's such a heavy bottle of Pinot Grigio and very structured and great, great, great acidity. Um, just tremendous, tremendous mouthfeel. Long finish, very good bottle of Pinot Grigio. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, this to me is an 88 point Pinot Grigio. And that makes me very happy because for 10 bones, it really delivers. Great mouthfeel again is what really puts it over the top and definitely worth seeking out because let's be honest, because that's what we like to do. There is an obscene amount of junk Pinot Grigio in the marketplace. Let's call it 95%. Let's move on. 
Now this is an intriguing little wine. Talk about trying different things and exploring the wine world. This is Goose Bay 2006 Sauvignon Blanc from Marlboro, which is a great, great region for Sauvignon Blanc, as we all know, and we love New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. This is 14 US dollars. I had this also pretty recently in the last couple of weeks, but here's what gets really interesting about this wine. This wine is kosher. And the reason I put this on the show is because it was the last one I can remember that I really got excited about that was kosher. And most importantly, to let you know, and we're breaking rules and we're trying different things. I mean, the best emails, Patty O just emailed me the other day saying she would have never tried this wine if it wasn't for Wine Library TV and that it wasn't her total cup of tea. It was intriguing to her that she was analyzing this $8 wine and enjoying it and having fun conversation with her husband. So don't forget, wine is an experience. It's not strictly that, oh my God, this is the most delicious thing I've ever tasted. The food pairings, the bringing togetherness, the family, and, and the thought process and the intrigue of trying different things. This is a kosher New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc that's $14. I promise you, looking out to all 20,000 plus of you, none of you would just pick this up because most of you think kosher wine is crap. And a lot of that is true, but a lot is changing with kosher wine. I'm really excited about the kosher wine movement. I'm actually doing one kosher wine on WLTV. I'll probably do it next week while I'm away. It's good because it's a one product email that I want to talk about. It's one kosher wine and I'll be the whole show. There's a revolution in there and there's a revolution everywhere. I mean, there's a worldwide wine revolution and please, every rule you've got in your mind, throw it in the garbage. Kosher, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, $14. Again. New Zealand Sauvignon, light, light color, you know, like many New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs, but here's where it gets excited, hopefully, like last time. And yes, I mean, this wine is delivering on the nose like you would not believe. Think of the worst thing you ever smelled. Flip it, like Lionel Kittis City, turning that frown upside down. Flip it into something you would enjoy, and that's what I think about when I think this wine, because it's really, really aromatic. It's got great grapefruit flavors coming through. Little boysenberry, the cat pee is in the house. Don't be scared of the cat pee. Don't be scared of the cat pee. It's here, and it's really nice. The nose is really tremendous. This wine absolutely rips it. You don't need to be Jewish to try kosher wines. You don't need to be holiday season to try kosher wines. A wine is good if it's good, right? That's just the way it is. And this is a beautiful example. One of the better examples of a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc not getting too grapefruity and not too fruity and not too fruity, too fruity with the grapefruity. You know what I mean? This is wine that's bringing acidity and just doing its thing with great balance. Throw me the Loire Valley right now and you trick me. I mean, the cat is giving it away, but you take the cat pee out and I could really think there's a top notch 20 US bones Sancerre. And so for $14, I enjoy this wine quite a bit. As a matter of fact, to the tune of 89 to 90 points. I mean, this is an exceptional bottle of wine. There's so many 90 point wines being thrown out in New Zealand that are eight, nine, ten dollars that I don't believe deserve it. I, every time I see a 90 point score from Spectator Parker in New Zealand, something on blog, I really think 87. This is a true 90 point wine. It blew my mind. I tasted 14 kosher wines that day and 13 of them made me want to jump out my window and retire for good, but one stood out and that's what I do for a living. I taste a lot of bad wine so you don't have to. Let's move on. I'm feeling it there. I'm feeling it. It's episode 200. All right, this is a really intriguing wine. This is the uh, Linda Fuller, and this is a uh, Chardonnay that's 22 US dollars from Argentina. Michelle Roland, the infamous or famous wine consultant from Mondovino, um, who's widely regarded as great or straight dirty garbage, depending on where you sit on the fence. But it, the man is very talented one way or the other. He's got a style, but he's been around a long time and he's had different careers, so don't just judge him by one documentary that had an agenda. That being said, there's always truth to certain things. So it's one of those things, but this is a $22 Argentinian Chardonnay. And on Saturday at home, while I was going through all your emails, and hopefully three or 400 of you got an email from me on Saturday, um, I was drinking this wine and really getting into it. So much to the tune that I posted a post on Wine Library's forum. Ironically, that same day, we were tasting the wine in the store. The gentleman actually that owns the winery was here. Uh, it skips my mind, maybe Christoph. I apologize, but it just went away for a second. Anyway, 
I know Kahuna was in the house, and I know Paul G was in the house, and they added to my post in the forum on this wine, and though they didn't seem to love it as much as I did, don't forget, I had this wine decanted for two hours. It's sometimes great that they can't white wine, especially when they're young and explosive. And number two, they were drinking out of plastic cup, except Paul G who used the Julius move and brought his own glass. But that being said, it was probably just popped, and, and so I really enjoyed this wine. Let's give it a whirl again. I, I liked it so much to the tune of, I think, as a 92-point wine just a couple days ago. Great golden color. Let's give it a whirl. Once again, great over... Now, different than yesterday's Behringer. This is over-the-top oak and cream, but not so over-the-top. It's over-the-top in the scheme of things, but not obnoxiously over-the-top. A little bit more balanced. And what holds this together is an amazing... Amazing maple wood kind of, burnt maple wood kind of smell. And if you've never lit a maple wood tree on fire like I have, you may not know what that smells like, but I do, because my grandma was crazy when she, you know, when we moved to Hunterdon County, New Jersey and decided to burn down our entire forest. What are you gonna do? That being said, that's what this smells like. Oh, it's a true story too, it's crazy. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. Again, over the top oak and butter coming through. Very, very, very acidic. Very young. Reminds me of top notch oaked Chablis from Burgundy. And not that's really not what I want Chablis to do. I don't like the oak movement in Chablis, but this is Argentina, this is what they do. Um, they use a lot of newer oak and there's a place for it. If yesterday's Behringer Reserve was a 90 point wine, this is still going to be a better wine. Maybe not at this exact moment because the acidity is bothersome. And I think, you know, by only being open for about an hour compared to decanting for two hours, I did not just see the acidity and a little bit of the, you know, a little bit of like the uh, lazy bones kind of just like, you know, just not finding its ground. You know, it's not firmly set in, in its uh, stance. It's almost like batting. You need, you need to really be in your firm stance. Um, I'm still gonna score this wine 91 plus. I adore where this wine is going, but hence, this is a wine that I really would rather people put away for a year or two and really see how it evolves or decant it for four or five hours. You will be stunned where this goes. The city will blow off. The uh, gobs of butter kind of come together, structure around the city and gives great mouthfeel. I've spent a lot of wine, time on that wine, but I really like it. Let's move on. Give this a big rinse, because boy, can you smell the oak. This glass is gonna get a workout today, just like I like to do it. Hammond, New Zealand Pinot Noir from Nelson. And this is a uh, value 13.5 alcohol content. And uh, I didn't call it, what is this? I think this is about a $12 uh, Pinot Noir from New Zealand. Again, we're going for the perfect $200 case of wine. Got it, Eric? We're 20 minutes in already. Uh, the perfect $200 case of wine. And so you're gonna have to have $12 wines in there. And this is a perfect wine to put in there. One, because it's worth a heck of a lot more than $12. Two, because New Zealand is an up and coming place for Pinot Noir. California's gotten crazy and has gone to 40 before you can even sniff good stuff, or like really good stuff, at least 25 before good stuff. And uh, New Zealand is still a place for value. So let's give this a whirl. You know, very dark again, you know, extracted. Maybe they're cheating and throwing some Syrah in there. I didn't think so the first time I tried, but. You know, classic dirty socks with, you know, with the three stripe colors. Let's go, you know, blue, orange, blue, because I was a Knicks fan and I had to have those right up to the kneecaps. You know, I still wear high socks every time I play basketball. I know a lot of you are scared. Don't sleep on the skills. And let's go with that, wrap that, you know, Sometimes they do the bacon with the asparagus. I want you to use the 1984 Converse orange, blue, orange sequenced sock, you know, knee highs, and you're gonna wrap the asparagus in it. Put it in the oven for 25 seconds, take it out, sniff it. That's what this wine smells like. Give it a whirl. If you buy one wine from this case, you've got to make it this. This is a very, very, very good bottle of Pinot Noir that if you taste it blind with all your nerdy friends, you would trick them to think it's $25 to $50 Burgundy or real California Pinot 
or old school, old world Pinot. This is bringing the thunder, guys. Black pepper, dark licorice that's not sweet. Think of licorice without any kind of sweet component in it. Just remove that sweetness for a second. Really obvious pickles. You know how much I like those, so that's probably something. If you don't like pickles, maybe that's not the biggest thing. A little pickle juice going on in there. Asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Bring all the vegetable categories into the house, into your palate, close it, wrap some beautiful raspberry tones. Give me a little, little hint, believe this or not, a tad, a tad of sweet red peppers, which is so obvious on this, and just, it's, This is a joke. I'm gonna score this wine 90 plus points and I should go, you know what, 91. I don't wanna be scared. 91 points on this wine, 12 bucks Pinot Noir, seek it out. I think they have good distribution, most people should be able to find this. This wine is rocking. Great, great structure too. It was the first wine I picked for this case because I had it about a week ago and this bottle's even better. It's singing. It's like Mariah and Christina singing in my ear. All right, let's move on. You're gonna recognize this bad boy because this was one of the most intriguing and interesting and talked about wines in Wine Library TV history, just not this vintage. This is the 2004 Lenoble Chinon and this is coming from 40 to 80 year old old vine Cabernet Franc grapes in the Loire Valley, Cab Franc, you heard me right, I know a lot of you old timers know this wine, 14 bones, let's give it a whirl. And I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, for all of you that love the 03, I'll give you a sneak peek. I liked this better. Gray color again, really dark, even darker than the last one around. Let's give it a whirl. It's ridiculous to me that you can take a V8 and pour it into a bottle of wine and call it wine, because that's what this smells like. I mean, let's be honest, this is carrots and celery all day long, and just an overwhelming cabbage smell as well, like raw cabbage. This is so vegetal. It's so vegetal that I'm embarrassed that I even told you that Hammond had vegetal characteristics to it. It's like, it's like you think you're the vegetal monster? Get the heck out of here. I'm the vegetal king of this town, and this wine is the vegetal king of any town. There's rarely more vegetal noses and, and flavors coming through from any other wine in the world if it doesn't come from Loire Valley, Cabernet Francs, they bring the thunder. God, it's, it's crazy. And this is where the wine takes a, you know, you know I like the shoulder lean, takes a little umph over the O3. The blast of dry cocoa flavors that come through on the mid palate after that first shock of, of vegetal aspects, that dark chocolate, I mean it just makes me think like you're, you're picking from, it's just, it's so, I don't know, it's so like coffee chocolate, you know I feel like putting on this big hat and standing in the middle of like 140 degree weather and and biting cocoa beans. I mean, it's it's that shot that really rocks you, then goes back to a very smooth finish, great structure, perfect acidity, balance, and finish for a $14 bottle of wine. This is an obnoxious, obscene, and uncanny effort from the Loire Valley. Score this wine, 91 points as well, 14 bones were on a roll, but that's what happens when I preview them on the way. So, having a lot of fun. Again, a great bottle of wine. Just great. I mean, what else is there to say? All right, now we're gonna get interesting on you. We're gonna go a little different on you. This is the Caschina del Freta Grigolino, Grigliolino, and this is 13 US dollars, and this is from Piedmont, indigenous grape of Piedmont. Now what gets real interesting about this is um, this is 13 bones, and it's 2005 vintage, and what gets really cool about this wine is, I like to call this the wine the flasher wine. And I'm gonna tell you why I call this the flasher wine. Look at this color. It is so light, it's not even funny. And so what do you think you're about to get into? Something very light and very boring and one dimensional and maybe not even that good. And I call this the flasher wine because you know, a regular trench colored, you know, cream colored trench coat, you look at it as I would look at this and you think, you know, no big deal. <laughs> until this happens, and then everybody thinks it's a big deal. And for some people, it's a little deal. But, you know, all depends on who you are. That being said, this wine looks like no big deal at all. And then you taste it. 
You get classic Piedmonte kind of flavor profiles going through, through your nose. I'm getting like a dry raisin. Throw me a little truffles in there. Maybe it's just my brain saying, you know, it's Piedmont and there's truffles, but it's there. You get that mushroomy truffle aspect going on. Real obvious black pepper. Like the stuff you buy for 39 cents at ShopRite. Like the cheapest one of the bunch and just open it, smell it. That's exactly what's coming through in this. Let's give it a whirl. Oh my God, there will be an episode tomorrow. Tomorrow's the Thursday when I'm supposed to be tasting the four wines that I told you ahead of time I was gonna taste. Not good planning by the GV man, but we're gonna tape that afterwards. Damn. Anyway, lots of tannins. I mean, this is by far the driest my mouth has been so far. The seeds inside this grape, inside the Green Union grape, are so bitter and tannic. And these wines, even though they're, they're going through a different pressing these days, still give you tremendous tannins and dry mouth. And I don't mind dry mouth, especially when that dry mouth is accompanied by the friend called raspberry, cherry, and, and strawberry, triple, three cousin connection in your mouth. You know what I mean? I mean, it's very dry and there's lots of red berries. I guess that would have been a better way to say it. That all being said, this is a very solid wine, a very different wine, an intriguing wine from a world-class area. It brings a lot of interesting characteristics. Don't think of it as Barolo or Barbera or anything like that. It's its own animal. And you need to try it for yourself. This is spaghetti wine. This is an alternative for all that junk Chianti that you all drink. Stop it. Stop drinking the junk Chianti. And drink some of this. Olive I'm gonna get, what's that? Oh <laughs> yeah, exactly. Eric goes to Olive Garden every other day, so he drinks a lot of junk Chianti. That all being said, let's give this wine 88 points. It's a nice bottle of wine, it's nothing crazy, but I wanted to throw in this, throw in this. I wanted to throw this in because it's a little different pace. I had it recently, I really liked it. It's intriguing, it's different, let's move on. All right, this is a very interesting wine to me. This is the uh, Tinto Arlarba 2000 Crianza, 13% alcohol content, 90 points, Robert Parker, 14 US dollars. And I'm just a huge fan of this wine. I've actually consumed four or five bottles in the last three or four months. And uh, give it a little whirl. Let's taste through. This is going to be an epic. This is why uh, using Viddler really works. You can kind of stop and know which button you're at. And you're going to know how long it is. And that's going to scare you. Were you scared of the length? Were you scared of the length? Not the flasher thing. I'm talking about the length of the video. Anyway. 14 US dollars, 90 points Parker, really extract, we're gonna do two Spanish wines because no case is complete without some Spanish wine. Really nice dark color, let's give it a whirl. Yeah, I mean, who needs $40 Bordeaux? I mean, it's a structured, classic wine. A little more extract, a little more New World than garage Bordeaux that are coming out of the saint Emilion and coming out of, um, you know, the Pomerol region. This wine is rocking good. It's got a lot of structure, great black cherry cola flavor going on in there. Give me a little hint, a little hint of mint coming through on the mid palate, which I really enjoy. Not like Heights or that eucalyptus that you're used to, but just like a shaving. Give me a little shaving. Treat it like a truffle but it's a little mint leaf, so you can see how little that would really come out. But just three or four specks. Great, dirty, dry sand flavor. Might not sound great to you, but when you accompany that, again, that's the second time I used that today, but when you accompany that, again, with plum, and it's like a dark black plum, you know, when it's like real dark. Um, ooh, you, you like that, huh? Kind of licked your lips. Um, like a dark plum and like classic Sahara Desert, you know, dust, uh, you know, like sand and dust, and, and that's really the overriding flavor of this entire wine. A little mint, a little other stuff. I like this, Parker nailed it, let's go 90 points, 14 bones, again, a wine that I highly, highly recommend. Great stuff, and I am, you know what? I'm glad I did this. I'm enjoying myself for the 200th episode, and don't I deserve it? Let's move on. This is interesting. I've been looking forward to this. This is the Dominio de Langraz, Langaz, excuse me, 2004, and this is a very interesting wine. This is 80% Tempranillo, 20% Cabernet, spends 12 months in French oak. Jay Miller, 
What does that name mean to you? Jay Miller is now the Spanish wine critic for The Wine Advocate, taking over for Robert Parker. He's a longtime friend of Robert Parker's, a former store owner, my competitor out of uh, Baltimore, a great guy. I don't know him personally, but so many uh, acquaintances that we both know, um, people say I'd like him. And so, I like everybody, so that doesn't mean much, but Jay, don't take that personally, because he's a great, great guy, and he caused a lot of waves in the wine world about a week or 10 days ago because he gave all the new scores, the Spanish wine scores came out and they were through the roof, 99s, 97s, 98s. As a matter of fact, a couple of the wines that I've done on Wine Library TV that I've rated, for example, one, if you go back to the Spanish episode, La Baceta, I scored 94, he went 96 on. Some other wines I've scored 90 points, he's got 92 points on. So I found Jay to be about two points higher than me on almost everything, except this. This is a $20 US wine, and it is the first vintage of this wine. And this wine, Mr. Miller, I'm gonna call you Mr. Miller on this one, scored this wine 90 points. I've disagreed the two times I've had it. Here's the third, let's give it a score. Really dark, temp and cab, let's give it a whirl. This wine's worth 90 points on the nose. Again, back to that vanilla flavor that we talked about the other day that I adore so much. That was yesterday. It's got a really beautiful vanilla extract nose, but this one comes almost like uh, cherry vanilla. It's almost like that, you know, it's like a cone of vanilla ice cream, but half swirl. Not chocolate this time, but think of strawberry since that's more, but no, it's cherry. It's cherry and vanilla, half swirl. Half swirl, let's give it a whirl. He missed this wine. I mean, the man missed this wine. How could he be two points higher than me on everything? And then this one be three, two, two points lower than me. This is a 92 point wine to me. This is a New World Fruit Bomb. So Old World fans, leave, don't buy it. I don't wanna hear your email. Don't tell me I'm a jerk off. Don't tell me Parker's changed my mind. Nothing of that is true. I'm a very strong minded chap, but this is the way I want my New World wine because I drink them all. Remember, you drink, you drink. All wines, remember? No ruts, no, you know, try different things. And I've gotta talk about on this wine because this is new world, but I think old world fans would love this wine. It's exceptionally well made. It's got the vanilla going on. It's got some great oak, not oak, like bark smoked cedar box. Little tad of hint of leather. Now it's so covered by fruit, you can't even realize it's there. It's like a needle in a haystack. It's like a, a stack of strawberries, but there's like a leather shoe in the middle down there. And the pile's about four feet tall, so that's tough, but if you dig, you're gonna find it. And if you dig into this wine, and wow, that was almost interesting, if you're gonna dig into this wine, you're gonna find different flavor profiles that you don't see in a lot of flabby, one-dimensional New World wines, and I agree with you, that happens a lot, but not in this one. Let's go 92 plus in this wine for 20 bones, a wine that rocks it, a wine that brings the new wave the right way. You know, if you thought the Rolling Stones and the Beatles were the only way to go, and then U2 came out and you didn't think that was like respected because it's too New World and it's in mid 80s or whatever the hell they came out, and you know what, you were wrong. They're a classic band now, I guess, because I don't know nothing about music, but that being said, that's the analogy. Don't close your mind to wines that are new or New World just because they're not Bordeaux or Chateau Petrus or Chateau this. I know, I'm going long, but this is the 200th episode. And if they leave, they leave, but I know you're with me. Quintense, Chateau Pisquier, from the Rhone Valley, Ventoux exactly, and this is a very intriguing wine. I've been dying to do this. 90 to 92 points, Robert Parker. We sell this wine like it's got diamonds in the middle of it. And this wine is about 17, 18, 19 bucks, somewhere in that range. 90 to 92 RP, from the Rhone, a place that I adore. I may move to the Rhone one day. I might live in the Rhone. I might you know, I might just live in the Rhone. After the Jets win five Super Bowls, I'll sell the Jets and I'll buy the Rhone Valley because the Jets are gonna be worth so much after I take them over and win five straight Super Bowls. Anyway, let's give this a whirl. Great color, very nice color. This wine's silly. I mean, silly like you're wearing a Ronald McDonald nose in a board meeting silly. I mean, this is really exceptional value. The nose is so extracted and so intriguing, you know, classic rhubarb flavors coming through, a little bit of bark, give me a little cedar box as well, and this tobacco at its finest. If you're a cigar fan, you're gonna adore this wine on the nose. Really intriguing insects and bugs flavors. It gets a little bit insecty that way, but it's really, really nice. And again, rounded out with a very, you know, subtle but obvious ruby 
grapefruit flavor, which is very reserved for white wines, but I get that spritz of it kind of on the nose here, which I really enjoy. And red fruit flavors. I mean, this is all your cherries and strawberries and raspberries. It all comes through on this nose. Dry, real. You know how you love when people keep it real? This wine keeps it real. True to the area, but it's using just beautiful 80% Syrah, 20% Grenache grapes, so the Syrah's big. And that's what it is, Syrah's big. I mean, you know, some, you know, some people are big boned. What do you want them to do? They can only do so much exercise. There's only so much dieting for big bone people. Syrah's big, and it's from the Rhone, so leave it alone. And when it's 80%, leave this wine alone. It's bringing the thunder, it's not Australia, it's not California, it's true to the Rhone. You get those flavors, like an old shoe that you go fishing and you pull out, and you dry it out in the sun for three days, and then you smell it, that old leather in the musty ground of the pond that you fish at, you get a little bit of that flavor profile. I like this wine, I like it a lot. Pepper, strawberry. Remember, it's one of my favorite things. This is a classic, it falls right into it. Very dry, very young, but very real. Hey, if you like shutting up the pops, and you don't wanna spend 40 bones, you wanna spend, spend money in the teens, this is the wine for you to seek out. This is a world beater, I have to agree with Parker on this, and you know what, 90 92? I'm gonna go 90 points on this. I mean, there, there, you know, there could be done, there's some things about it that I don't love, and, and you know, obviously you probably wanna know what that is, and I guess at the end of the day, the finish is not as long for me as I would like from something in a superior 90, above a 90 point score, but there's so many great things going on. This is an easy 90 point wine for me to score, and, um, and uh, that's it. I might, I might go to the thousand point scale so I could rate this like 90.6, you know, 906, you know. I don't think Julius will like that. Let's move on. He wants me to go to like the two point scale. I give this one a one, and this one a two. All right, Wooden Nickel, 2003 Petite Syrah. A lot of Petite Syrah heads. You know I had to throw one in, and I've got one that's really, really under the radar. It's from Napa Valley. It's 32 bones. It's a tiny, tiny producer, and it does, it, this is very interesting. On the back of the bottle it says, it doesn't matter who my father was, it matters who I remember he was. Pretty cool. I might have to use that with my dad. Um, you know, and you know, listen, I hope you're still with me, just because this is now becoming Wine Library TV, the movie, you know, maybe you're still here, and if you are, God bless you. Thank you, you know, thank you. Um, Wooden Nickel, 2003 Petite Syrah, Napa Valley. Great color, 32 bones, expensive, you know, not really expensive for Petite Syrah in California, but you know, we're having these Syrahs in the 20s and what have you, so. Expensive for the bunch, but I wanted to give you something special, and this wine rocked my pants off. Like, it just did, it was just phenomenal. No, seriously, I took my pants off, I was so excited, it was hot, you know? Amazing, intriguing, mandarin orange kind of nose, which is very different, very beautiful, very true to Napa with Petite Syrah for me, and that's what I love about this. A little charcoal too, you know, this makes me think of barbecue. It makes me think of taking uh, tangerines and putting it on your barbecue and letting the smoke go up. That's what's really coming through and that's an intriguing kind of nose. You should really try it out. I mean, this wine alone on its nose is really worth it. Let's give it a whirl. There's a lot of hot Petite Syrahs that are going for $50, $60, $70 out of California. We had Richard Betts on the other day to say this wine is that inferior to the Betts Syrah. The Betts Syrah was even more new world and over the top, but this has a little bit more balance and a little bit more elegance that I really enjoy. Great structure, I mean, destroyed my palate. I mean, destroyed. It's like um, getting shot, the difference between getting shot by a paintball in your mouth and getting 40 people to take buckets of paint as you sit there like this and pouring it in your mouth. I mean, that's how much this wine coat my mouth. Thank God it was the last wine, and thank God we're going to dessert wine, because I'm really not sure, and it's not a lot of wines for me. And I haven't tasted a lot of wines today, but this is a palate destroyer. Are you a palate destroyer? Well, if you aren't, then you need to have wood and nickel in your corner, because this wine is a palate destroyer. It coats it, it explodes it, it tears it apart, and it says, I'm home. It puts its flag with its little nickel head on there, and it just stands there like this. What are you gonna do about it, palate? Huh? And that's what this wine does. And it does that with tons of licorice, tons of uh, 
really intriguing black currant flavors, very intense blueberry flavors on this wine, which I really like. This is a jammy wine. This is when we did the palate tasting episode of 148 uh, that you could really go into the extracted jams and jellies and, uh, and spreads, and this is a fantastic bottle of wine. I'm gonna score 91 points. You know, it's a little one-dimensional. It's not as crazy as, you know, a lot of other things out there. I'm gonna go 91 plus on it, but for 32 bucks, it's such a ride, and it's a ride that usually costs you $70. And that's why I have it in here. Let's move on. And let's finish up. Before I do the last wine, I guess I'll do some house cleaning. Quick link, Chris Mott, if you're still awake. NCAA tournament. Guys, 12 p.m. tomorrow is the expiration. Let's get a lot of people in it so we can all talk trash. I'm going to come in last. I just took too many upsets. Eric knows. He's already shaking his head. Also, um, I just want to mention one other thing. No, I mentioned I won't be here today, and then later I changed it since this is a movie. You know, you gotta have, you know, Eric Peaks and Valleys. You know, we had to come back. So uh, I will have to tape an episode in a little bit, and uh, we're gonna have to do a question a day in a minute. Henry of Palm, 2005, special select late harvest Vidal, 10% alcohol, 16 US bones from Canada. And I'm really interested in having this wine because uh, I like Canada a lot. 2005. I went to Montreal. I went to the casino. And I won 49 hands in a row in blackjack. And I'm not joking. So how can't I love Canada? All right. I couldn't even pronounce it. I called it Canada. Did I call it Hannah Storm or something? I love Canada. Let's give it a whirl. 16 bones. Vidal Late Harvest Special Select. These wines are just awesome. This is a citrus bomb. You know, this is really grapefruit at its fine, finest. Exploding on the nose, give it a little, little hint of caramel. Lots of pineapple, old pineapple. You know, like soft, cushy, like dull pineapple, or like baby food pineapple on the nose. AJ's 11 years younger than me. I was there. Let's give it a whirl. Us wine critics, and I'm not one of them, but let me just say that. Us wine critics, we don't know how to rate dessert wine. The sugar just tricks us. Sugar tricks you. It's like a pretty girl. You know, at the end of the day, I'm going to have to score this wine 90 points because it's really great. It's got great acidity. It's got great structure, great mouthfeel. As you can see, staying under 200 bucks, you get a lot of 90 pointers, but they're out there. And, you know, the, all these wines average in that 8 to $20 range. Great time. Question of the day time, guys. What the hell a question of the day? Question of the day. Do you like me? Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. 200 more? Mm-mm.